<laughs> okay, kids. Hey, welcome back to another kid fun coat. Awesome Christmas story. What do we have today, Snowies? Peter and Lotta's Christmas. Okay, here we go again again. The first Christmas that Peter and Lotta spent with Aunt Green, Aunt Brown, and Aunt Lavender, they couldn't understand why everyone was being so mysterious, because they had never had a Christmas present before. They tried peeping through keyholes and listening at the door, but it was no use. They couldn't see or hear what their aunts were doing. They couldn't understand either why everyone was so busy. The aunts were cleaning the whole house, and whatever they did, little Dot, the dog, and the children seemed to be in the way. Then Aunt Brown made some gingerbread dough and she gave some to Peter and Lotta so they could make gingerbread shapes for themselves. Little Dot wanted some as well and so he got a little bit of dough too. But it stuck in his throat and Esmeralda the cat laughed at him. <laughs> you couldn't hear her laughing but Lotta knew because of the smile on her face. Then it began to snow and everything outside turned white. Uncle Blue asked if they wanted to go into the forest with him to choose a Christmas tree. The family who owned the furs had promised him that he could have whichever one he liked. It took a great deal of hunting before they found the tree that was everything a Christmas tree ought to be. Some trees were too big, some too small, and others were crooked and unbalanced in some way. And on their search, they went deeper and deeper into the forest until at last they found a tree which they all liked. Uncle Blue cut it down and put it on their sledge and set off for home. But they had not gone far before he discovered that he had lost one of his galoshes and they had to go back to look for it. In the end, they found it deep in the snow just where Uncle Blue had cut down their tree. By this time it was growing dark and it had also started to snow. So they couldn't even see their footprints. They walked and walked until they were quite lost. Poor Lotta was scared because she was almost sure she could see the small fir trees moving and pointing snowy fingers at them. But Uncle Blue said that he was imagining things and they would soon leave this part of the forest. Sure enough, they did reach the road, but they were a long way from home and it was pitch black and cold. Then a timber sledge came along. The driver was very friendly and he soon tied their little sledge to the back of his big one and gave them a lift. Uncle Blue rode in the sledge with Lotta, but Peter sat on the little one and kept an eye on the Christmas tree because he couldn't bear to think of coming home without it. Peter and Lotta did not realize just how fine a Christmas tree they had chosen until Christmas Eve. The aunts decorated it, lit all the candles before the two children came in to see it. They both thought they had never seen anything so beautiful before. They could have stood there just staring at it all night. While Aunt Lavender played and sang carols and Uncle Blue told them the story of the shepherds and the baby in the manger. Then they danced round the tree as you can see from the picture on the cover of this book. Peter and Lotta had never had such a good time in their lives. They just sat down at the table when there was a loud banging on the door and in came the Christmas goat with a sack on his back. Peter and Lotta took one look and hid under the table. What snows? Uh, what is the goat doing there? I don't know. That's their Christmas thing. Oh. From those days in Sweden, Father Christmas hadn't begun to give presents, and a big Christmas goat used to come inside. He would thump on the floor with his stick and say, Are there any good children here? So it is not surprising that Peter and Lotta were scared. The ants told him to come out and say thank you to the Christmas goat, because he was really very kind, and he brought them some presents. And so they came out, because after all, they did want to know uh, what was in the parcels. The Christmas goat patted them on the head and told them to be good and work hard at their lessons. Then he pulled out several interesting looking packages from his sack and put them on the table. No sooner had the Christmas goat gone than Uncle Blue came in. And he was quite cross that the Christmas goat had come just while he had been out of the room for just a few moments. Peter and Lotta loved opening their parcels, although they couldn't understand how the Christmas goat had known just what they wanted. That night when they had gone to bed, it was Aunt Lavender's turn to tell them a story, and Lotta asked her about the Christmas goat. Who was he and where did he live? Aunt Lavender told them that the Christmas goat was an enchanted prince who lived in the forest. He had curly black hair, and while the wind sighed in the trees, he would play the lute and sing so beautifully in the moonlight that even birds listened to him. Her aunt's description was so sharp and clear that Lotta thought she could almost see the magic prince. Where does he live in the forest? asked Peter. Right in the middle, where the fir trees grow tall and twin flowers bloom most thickly, said Aunt Lavender. But go to sleep now or you won't be up in time for church in the morning. And then she went. But Peter and Lotta went on talking for a long time about the Christmas goat. Peter said he knew exactly where he lived. It must be in the nearby forest because he had seen himself that ground was thick with twin flowers. And they decided that they would go and find the enchanted prince and ask him to take some presents from them to the ants for next Christmas. Then they fell asleep after the nicest Christmas they had ever had. Peter and Lotta still talked to each other about the enchanted prince even after Christmas was over. They each drew a picture of him and put it up on the wall. 
to remind them to go and find him when the snow had melted in the forest. Peter gave him checked trousers just like Uncle Blue's because that is what he had seen him wearing when he peeped out from under the table. Lotta, of course, drew the prince singing in the forest, but they did not tell the aunts what they were going to do because it was a secret. Time went by quickly after Christmas, and before they knew it, spring had arrived. Aunt Green took them into the woods to pick pussy willows and gorse flowers, but she told them that on no account were they to go far into the forest by themselves, and Aunt Lavender said the same thing when they went with her to pick wild strawberries, and again when they all went blueberry picking. The aunts were afraid to let the children go into the forest by themselves. After that time, they had got lost with Uncle Blue. So summer passed, and twin flowers bloomed and withered without the children going to look for the enchanted prince. The ants used to get their milk from a small farm on the edge of the forest called Forest Farm. The farmer's young wife usually drove the milk cart herself. Sometimes she had her little twins with her strapped in so they wouldn't fall out. Peter and Lotta thought they were great fun and Lotta thought they were the nicest twins she had ever seen. One day that autumn the milk cart did not come as usual and Aunt Brown was cross because she wanted to bake some bread and she needed the milk. We can go get it, said Peter and Lotta. We know where it is. Won't it be a long way for you, said Aunt Brown? The milk will be a very heavy to carry. No, it won't, said Peter. We used to carry the washing, which was much heavier, and we had to walk much further with it, too. Well, all right, children. Off you go, then, said Aunt Brown, and she gave them some biscuits to eat on their way. Peter and Lala hurried off before the other ants could come and tell them that they were too small to go so far on their own. They were very excited because at last they thought they could look for the enchanted prince, and this is why they went through the forest instead of going along the road. The twin flowers had stopped flowering long before, but long creepers were still crisscrossing the ground, and the further they went into the forest, the more they found. Suddenly they heard someone singing. They hurried towards the sound, and they saw a man sitting outside a wooden hut singing and playing a guitar. Peter and Lotta stood still for a long time just watching him, but he did not notice them. He was wearing ordinary working clothes and didn't look at all like a prince, but his hair was black and curly. He could sing beautifully and he lived where the twin flowers grew most thickly, so they knew he really must be the prince. They came closer and then he turned his head and saw them. What do you want? He asked. Are you the Christmas goat? Said Peter. The man laughed. <laughs> Well, I suppose I was for the neighbor's children, he said. If you like, I'll show you how charcoal burning works. And he led them up to the stack where a little noise was coming from the top. The children were very surprised that the Enchanted Prince was working as an ordinary charcoal burner. But Peter was so interested in the stack that he almost forgot why they were there. However, Lada did not. Would you be kind enough to take some presents from us to our aunts on Christmas Eve, she asked. Where do your aunts live? The charcoal burner asked, laughing. By this time, Lotta thought that he really did look like a prince, even though his face was rather dirty. So Lala told him where they lived, and she also explained that Aunt Lavender had told them about the enchanted prince. The charcoal burner said that he would take presents to the ants, but they would have to get them ready for him, because he couldn't manage to choose Christmas presents for everyone. Peter and Lotta agreed for that this was only fair. Then they arranged where they should send the parcels when they were finished. The charcoal burner prince told them to send them to the forest farm with the milk cart and said he would fetch them from there. Then they said goodbye to the enchanted prince. They were very pleased to have found him, although Lotta thought it was a little odd that a prince should want to be a charcoal burner. Peter said that the prince had to have something to do while he was in the forest all day and that anyway, he was thinking of being a charcoal burner himself when he grew up. As they last reached forest farm and there they found the twins, oh there you go, on the floor in tears. Their mother was in bed and couldn't get up because she had broken her leg. She told them that a neighbor's wife was milking the cows for her so they could take some milk home with them. Peter and Lotta each took a twin and tried to give them something to eat. While they were doing this, the doctor arrived. He set the twin's mother's leg and told her that on no account was she to get out of bed. She said that in that case, she had no idea how she was going to manage because her husband was away working in the forest and the neighbor's children had whooping cough so the twins couldn't go there. Then Peter and Lotta said they would take the twins home to the ants. The doctor said, What a good idea! I'll drive you there myself! Peter and Lotta had their milk cans filled and the neighbor's wife promised that her son would drive the milk cart over to the aunts every day while the twins' mother was ill. Then she helped Peter and Lotta to dress the twins up in their warmest clothes, and their mother asked them to strap the twins in so they wouldn't tumble out. At last, they set off. 
The ants were horrified when Peter and Lotta <gasps> arrived back home with the twins, but the doctor told them that everything would be all right. Everything's going to be okay. It would be nice for Peter and Lotta to have someone to look after. If the doctor thought it was a good idea, it's a good idea. Then the ants were convinced because they believed that the doctor was always right. Soon, Uncle Blue came home and he nearly fell over one of the twins who was crawling by the door. Ah! Just then, the other twin tugged at the tablecloth and pulled over a vase of flowers and both of them began yelling into the top of their voices, but luckily no one was hurt. When things had calmed down a little, the ants told Uncle Blue what had happened. He said he would go straight to the carpenter and ask him to nail together four hurdles to make a playpen for the twins. The ants found two clothes baskets that made perfect little beds. Lotta begged and begged to be allowed to have please, them in her room. Please. And the ants said yes. It was hard for everyone. The twins were into everything and it was impossible to know what they would get it to next. Sometimes they crawled, sometimes they walked, and they pulled down everything they could reach. Things got a little easier after the carpenter had made the playpen. Peter and Lotta played that the twins were baby bears in a cage and they fed them biscuits through the bars. They put little Dot and Esmeralda in the cage and pretended that they were a lion and a tiger. But they didn't want to stay in the playpen and neither did the twins. Once Peter and Lotta's biscuits had run out, and they set up such a howl that it quite frightened the ants. So Peter and Lotta put on the twins' reins and took them out for a walk. All the other children in the village came and wanted to have a turn holding the twins too. Peter thought that this was a very good idea, and whenever it was his turn to look after them, he always took them out for a walk in the village. But the best time of all was bath time. The twins had their tub in the kitchen and they laughed and splashed and squirmed about all over the place. Even Uncle Blue thought it was fun to watch them. But one day the twins' mother came to fetch them because her leg was better. She was glad that the aunts and Peter and Lotta have looked after the twins so well and she thanked them very much. Thank you, thank you. Lotta thought that the house felt empty when the twins had gone, but Peter said that perhaps it was a good thing because now they could start making their Christmas presents. Lotta didn't find it difficult to make Christmas presents out of all the bits and pieces that the ants gave her because she could sew and embroider. But it wasn't so easy for Peter because he tried carving his presents out of wood and it kept splintering. In the end, he made three really nice things for the ants. Here you can see the present that he and Lotta made. Guess who was going to have what? Peter wanted to make something bigger for Uncle Blue, so he asked Aunt Green's advice because she was good at making all sorts of things. They decided that together they would build him a bookshelf. They made it in Aunt Green's workshop next to Peter and Lotta's room. They used knobby oak branches, which they varnished and then decorated with pine cones and it looked really pretty. Aunt Green called it a rustic bookshelf and they wrote that on the outside of the parcel. Peter and Lotta wrapped all the presents in lots of paper so they were more exciting for the ants to open. Then they tied them all together and sent them secretly with the twins' mother to the Christmas goat. But they didn't send the bookshelf because it was much too big to go into the Christmas goat's sack. Peter thought they could put it on the dining table. Then it was Christmas Eve again, and just before coffee time, when they were dancing round the Christmas tree, there was a loud knock at the door, and in came a huge, shaggy Christmas goat, looking much more dangerous than the one that had come the year before. Peter and Lotta weren't frightened because they recognized the parcels he was carrying. Then, just as the Christmas goat was going to give out the parcels, there was a knock at the other door, and in came a second Christmas goat, exactly like the one from the previous year. He was most surprised to find another Christmas goat there already, and he lifted up his mask to stare at the first one. Then the children saw the second Christmas goat was their own Uncle Blue. The first Christmas goat brought out two pairs of skis and gave them to Peter and Lotta. These are from the twins! He said, Oh, thank you, Prince. You are kind, said Lotta. The first Christmas goat laughed and took off his mask, beard and all, so the children could see that it really was the charcoal burning prince from the forest. It was very kind of you, Mr. Peterson, to come and give the children such a nice surprise. Do sit down and have something to eat, said Aunt Brown. Lotta was amazed at Aunt Brown calling the prince Mr., but he just said, No, thank you. I'm afraid I must go back home now. The horse and sledge are outside waiting, but thanks for all your trouble looking after the twins. Happy Christmas to you all. Well, you must at least take these back for the twins, said Aunt Brown, putting two huge gingerbread goats into his pocket. It took Lotta a little while to realize that the charcoal burning prince wasn't a real prince, but the twins' father. But as soon as he had understood, Peter told the ants the whole story of how he and Lotta had gone looking for the enchanted prince in the forest. In the end, they all started giggling, especially when they remembered how startled Uncle Blue had looked when he saw another Christmas goat. Even Uncle Blue laughed, but he said he was surprised at Aunt Lavender telling the children nonsense about Enchanted Princess, and that Aunt Lavender said she had told the children a fairy story, and she thought they had understood that. Finally, the parcels were handed round and everyone was very pleased with their presents. The aunts thought that Peter and Lotta had been very clever, and Uncle Blue was especially pleased to have a rustic bookshelf, and he said he thought 
He would keep it for books about country matters. Peter and Lotta thought that this Christmas had been even better than the one before, because this time they had been giving presents as well as getting them. Perhaps they liked their skis best of all. Here you can see everyone watching while they try them out. Even Uncle Blue has taken down his old pair from the attic too. And now it is time for them all to say goodbye, goodbye and, and happy, happy Christmas. Christmas. Pretty good story, don't you think? Tell me what your favorite part about the story was. Favorite parts? Comments below. <laughs> and we'll give a ooh, snowy shout out. Is that how you do it, Snows? Yeah, and I is want it, them to ooh, also comment. Ooh, snowy shout out. I'm Snows. Watch me. Snowy shout out. And I want you guys to comment. What is it that the aunts and the uncle all had in common when it came to their last names? It described something. We gotta go. All right, guys. That's our time. You've been swell. See you later, kid Bye. Funko.